Hello, I am Carlo Biraghi and today I'm going to speak you about the permeability key category inside IMM methodology. Permeability can be defined as the ability of a porous material to allow fluids to pass through it. It is related to porosity but also to the shape of the porous. In urban studies, permeability describes the extent to which urban form permit or restrict movement of people, vehicles, or material and immaterial flowing. According to the layers ranked superimposition of IMM, permeability is mainly defined by the relationship between void and volume and slightly by link and transportation. In this presentation we are going to determine permeability in terms of the ability to move through, define a calculation method and study some possible values and their relative representation. Then we'll collect the results in some diagrams for the case study of Milano neighborhoods. Like the sample described in the image, the permeability is defined by the extent of the water that passes through the connected void space of the specimen. As it is visible from the picture below, not all the material are porous and not all the material are permeable. We, you can have porous that are not permeable because they are not connected. How to apply this principle on the urban scale then? On the right you can see some definition of permeability taken by urban studies literature. Permeability is related to the speed of movement in the urban fabric and is also clear that it is affected not only by the street area, so from the void, but also from the network configuration. It can also be expressed as the number of alternatives through an environment. So a built environment can be considered more or less permeable depending by its permits to the people to move around with greater ease and with more choice of routes. Permeability has fundamental layout implication. In the diagram below, the upper layout offers a greater choice of routes than the lower one. It is therefore more permeable. The presence of dead-end street is reducing permeability because of, they can be percorred just on one way. Permeability mostly depends on the number of links available for moving through. So urban cost context consisting of small blocks provide more potential to move through than a context consisting of a larger one. In the example of the block below, the more we cut it, the more it becomes permeable. Defining a calculation method for permeability, we start with a very simple value called street area. Street area is the relationship between the area of the streets over the total void area. It represents the percentage of void space that are connected and so that are permeable, ex excluding the courts, the private courts and other kind of disconnected void space. A second value is link length and the average link length of street network is obtained by dividing the total link length by the number of links. It represents the distances between intersections and so the easiness of changing routes and finding alternative paths within walkable distance. It can be seen like the length of the block side or the equivalent square grid of streets. The width of these streets is obtained dividing total street area by total link length. To fit our spectrum diagram, the value needs to be normalized, dividing the results by an hypothetical maximum value representative of the selected case studies. For the selected case studies, the cities of Lombardy, the KL has been fixed to 150 meters. These two maps represent the street area and the link length map, that is the equivalent square grid of the previous picture. Another value is the directness index and is obtained by dividing the linear distance among accesses to an area by the, po the shortest possible path on street network between the same points. Directness clearly represents how simple it is to cross an area. The shape of the selected area must be as much convex as possible in order to not affect the metric at all. Main factors affecting short path length are block size and the connection between the links of the street network. A uniform grid, for example, has a good directness index, highly increased by the presence of one or more diagonals. 
the presence of an obstacle like a railway or other non-permeable elements intersecting many linear distance paths strongly reduce directness. In order to calculate it, it, we need first to define accesses that are all the intersection point between the street network and the limit of the selected area. In case of 10 accesses, there will be 90 evaluated paths because lines starting and ending in the same points return null values. In the picture below, you can see an example of some of the lines starting for one axis of the area, then all the lines all together creating a sort of uniform red edge and then a zoom to see what this red edge is made of. Final directness map consists of single links ranked and scaled according to the number of times they are interested by the passage of a short path. It means that the darker and the thicker is a link, the, more prob the highest is the probability of being crossed by walking in between two points in the most direct way. Another value we use is called topography and can be intended as the average slope of streets. The slope of a street is intended as the angle between street link elements and their projection on the xy plane, as being calculated using the 3D length and the projected length as follows. To obtain the angle, we calculated the arcosine of the ratio between the projected length and the 3D length. In order to fit this value to our spectrum diagram, the value has been divided by the angle of the most inclined street in the world, that is 38% corresponding to 70 degrees. Topography has an important impact on street network properties. An aerial view only shows elements projected on an XY plane, shrinking distances and hiding differences in heights. The incline of a street introduces the concept of ascent and descent and affects the easiness of flow in different ways. Very steep streets are hardly cyclable and require more energy for car and pedestrian. It also has a role on natural phenomena as wind speed, sun shading and rain drainage. Finally, we represent the six values in a permeability spectrum diagram, which is composed of axes that contain the measurement up to a maximum value of 10, 100%. This diagram is clear to visualize since it can also be used comparatively between different case studies. The following slide presents three case studies of permeability investigation in different neighborhoods of the city of Milano. The three areas are the city center of Milano, an historical part of the city enclosed by the former medieval walls, the Citta Studi area, a development of the 20th century, and the Porto di Mare area, an area in the suburbs of the southeast part of Milan, very close to the countryside. This slide show the possibility of reading together the maps and the diagram and to make some consideration. For example, the street area value is much slower in Porto di Mare area because of the presence of very large voids as a huge park on the lower part of the site. The link length value instead is higher in Porto di Mare than in the other, case than the other cases because of the larger dimension of blocks and consequently the higher distance between intersection. The directness value is pretty high in all the samples and in Porto di Marajera is the highest one because of the presence of the strong diagonal that cross the square, the square of the upper part of the neighborhood. The slope is pretty, uh, is almost null in all the context because the city of Milano is pretty flat while in Porto di Mare is slightly higher because of the presence of overpasses of the railway and the highway. Tortuosity and constructivity are other two values that will be better explained in, a, in a, another video uh, that will be published soon. Here another possible representation, the first one is more intuitive so that we can grasp with a gradient of color why some streets of the cities are more permeable than others. And the, on, the le on the right side, we have a tortuosity map based on a flux density analysis that almost represents the same aspects. Now that we have understood the theory, it's time to apply it. All these analyses can be made by hand mapping the required information, but it's more convenient to rely on existing datasets and to use specific software for the calculation. The sources that we use are a topographic database of Milano City and Lombardy region. These are the links to access this data. 
According to the data structure and the level of detail, some cleaning or filtering operation could be needed in order to provide more reliable results. In case you have to extract data from simple drawings, some automation with Grasshopper or GIS are suggested. For directness, we wrote a simple algorithm with Grasshopper using the shortest path component and Bowerboard offset. Here you can find more details about how to do it. The data sources, so the specific layer we used from the topographic database in order to identify the railway, the volumetric units of building and the streets. How to make the raster map for tortuosity and constrictivity analysis and how to calculate some values. And in the end, also some cleaning operation needed on the layers in order to perform the action correctly. 